hi guys welcome to my channel and welcome to today's video so today I wanted to make a fun video about San Diego State University so if you guys have never been to my channel before I just graduated from state two months ago so repping the alumni apparel but I thought that I am now in the position to give you guys advice on the school and if you guys are looking to attend SDSU, wanting to find out more about the school, then this video is the place for you. So I wanted to give you guys the pros, the cons, the inside scoop about everything just because I wanted to give you guys some great advice about San Diego State University. So let's get started. So I think the first thing that a lot of people want to know about is Greek life. So if you didn't know and if you're new to my channel, I was in a sorority for three years. I rushed my sophomore year um, and it was like the best experience ever. I've met my best friends through um, my sorority. I was in Kappa Delta at SDSU and I had an amazing time. So with that information, um, I wasn't one of those girls who like dropped or like anything like that. And I also had a lot of leadership positions in my sorority too. And then I was also on the executive boards of other Greek organizations on campus as well. So basically all of my leadership experience was basically because of Greek life. So yeah. Um, but some of the things about Greek life that not a lot of people know about state and not a lot of people know until they're actually at the school um, is that when you're in a sorority at SCSU and you want to party with different frats and at different frat parties or whatnot, they're very like super strict about what sorority you're in if you're in a top house, if you have a group meet to get into the party. So when I was a freshman, I wasn't in a sorority, so I was considered a Jeed. That's basically just someone who's not in Greek life. My friends and I who lived on the floor with me my freshman year, we lived in Zura. We basically would go to this same frat like every single weekend because they didn't ask for group meets and they let in Jeeds. So, I was still able to get into frat parties freshman year um, because there are frats who don't care but if you want to go to like the fraternities who are in the stacks or frat row um, and those are like the big parties and like the cool frats um, you most likely need a group me <laughs> to get into those parties so what I learned is that we went to another fraternity party my freshman year and at the door they just asked us what our chapter president who it was and so we did some digging beforehand and just went online and looked up president of this sorority and then they let us in but nowadays you need to group me and then they'll also like go on your phone and like scroll to make sure that it's not a screenshot which is like low-key crazy but that's what they do at the at the door um, because they say that it's like a liability, blah, blah, blah. They can't let in girls who are cheats, whatever. So basically, long story short, if you want to party at the cool frats at SDSU, you have to be in a sorority and your sorority has to be friends with the frat. Going into the next segment of that, there is a pretty clear tier system of Greek life at SDSU and for some reason it's like not like this at a lot of other schools but at state it is um so basically it's like top tier middle tier and then like bottom tier and that's including like both sororities and fraternities so basically top sororities and fraternities they'll hang out together they'll like go to each other's parties middle tier they'll hang out together and then bottom tier will usually like hang out together so in my sorority we were like middle i'm not gonna like say that we were but in the grand scheme of things we basically hung out with like middle tier frats and we didn't party with top tier 
there were some girls who partied with bottom tier but i didn't really um but that's like how it is and so like once you're in that tier you can't really get out you can like a little bit if like you get a boyfriend who's in a top house or like you find some friends who are in a bottom house whatever in my opinion i didn't really care and especially because i was a sophomore i had like a lot more of like an open mind um but there are like a lot of people who genuinely care about the tier system at sdsu and it's like sort of weird but now that i graduated i have figured that it really doesn't matter but a lot of people really did care about the tier system and like you're in just like a bubble of like who you can hang out with and that sort of sucks um just because if you want to hang out at like different frats like you can't and i've heard at other schools like even in california like girls can just go to any frat they want to and it doesn't matter and like if you're a girl you could go to anywhere but that's not the case at sdsu so that's just something to keep in mind as well um and yeah <laughs> and then also in greek life there is definitely a lot of clicks and i definitely realized this too especially like in my own sorority basically in my pledge class so like i was a sophomore so like i hung out with a lot of the sophomores there was also a few juniors um and then there was like the freshmen obviously and that's like the majority part of a pledge class um because they are trying to recruit like obviously the freshmen so mostly the freshmen like all hung out together and then like the older girls which were like sophomores and juniors would hang out and so that like created like a little bit of a divide honestly um and then within the freshmen there was like a group here a group there a group here a group there it was never like everyone was always together um which sort of sucked but you were just able to find like your close friends faster i guess so that's a big thing too a lot of people think sororities are like a big happy family but honestly it's pretty clicky um so yeah that is what i have to say about greek life and now on to the area of sdsu so the area of sdsu it's in the ghetto like the straight up ghetto i lived on campus first year second year i Technically lived in an off-campus apartment, which was a short shuttle bus ride away. Third and fourth year, I lived technically again off-campus, but the apartment was literally like right there, like basically on campus. And all I gotta say, it's in the ghetto. SDSU is technically in La Mesa, so it's more inland of San Diego versus like UCSD is in La Jolla, which is by the beach, and it's like really nice and bougie up there. USD, another really bougie campus. SDSU is in the ghetto. So that being said, it's really unsafe at night if you're walking by yourself and it's dark. There's creepy people. Creepy people would come to the campus just to like try and find girls to like do things to. Um, really unsafe. I would always have my pepper spray on me constantly. Um, there would also be like police alerts happening all the time about like armed robberies, people getting their phones stolen while they're just walking outside and like all of this crazy stuff and honestly the entire time I lived there I was just like freaked out constantly at night um, because it is so unsafe and actually when I lived in my apartment my third year um, just going into senior year someone went into my apartment they took my window off and the screen and jumped through my first floor apartment and stole my laptop and my purse um, so that happened and the apartment like that had happened to so many people that like it was just a thing um which is like awful if you think about it it's like a, just a really unsafe area and like if you want to go to scsu you have to prepare for that because it's super unsafe but always especially when you're like partying and stuff always walk with a group never walk by yourself that is the worst thing that you could possibly do and yeah always just walk in a group and be safe Let's go on to the reputation of SDSU. So whenever you talk to people and you're telling them that you're going to go to state, people automatically assume that you're attending a party school, which it isn't 
as much as a party school as people make it um you can honestly go your entire scc career and not party um it's not like a thing where literally everyone is out partying every second um no one's studying it's just all parties every day again you make your college experience how you make it and if you want to party all the time then go ahead um there were definitely people my freshman year who partied all the time including myself um but then i turned out okay and you have to really like make time for like what you want to do whether it be studying for your classes um going to class participating in clubs being a leader in those clubs all of those things so SDSU has definitely died down in the past few years, especially most recently. The fact that a lot of the fraternities are like on probation right now, so I don't think there's partying happening right now. Again, I haven't been there in a semester now, so I'm not sure. No, actually? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just like blanked right now. I was there last semester, but I graduated from Capitalton in May, so that's why I haven't been a part of the Greek life scene. But anyways, party school or not party school, you make what you make of it. And then also, so for parties at, at, at SCSU, there's frat parties and then there's house parties. So house parties are like just ratchet parties that people throw on if they're not in Greek life and I went to a few in like Aztec Corner and Paseo and Boulevard like freshman and sophomore year those are like definitely like quite the time but your girl loved her frat parties so again like you make what you make of it even if you don't like get into Greek life and you don't rush or you don't like the houses that you had during recruitment whatever whatever you can still find parties to go to anyways. So it's all good. Next up is about the diversity at SDSU. So SDSU is considered one of like the most diverse schools in the country, I think. And so you'll be able to meet so many different types of people while you attend school here. I definitely have come across like so many different types of people that I never would have if I were to have stayed in Plainfield, Illinois, because Plainfield, they're all the same people. And here in San Diego, there's so many people who are like out of state, people come from the Bay Area, people come from out of the country as international students. So there's like so many people here. Um, and I also like discovered that in San Diego, there's such like a big like Asian community, which I would have never had the experience to like, meet all these people if it wouldn't had been for that as well um when i joined this hip-hop team it was like basically like all asian so like that was super exciting and i had been so like like closed-minded about like a lot of things before i came here and so i never really was able to experience like meeting other asians because plainfield is so white um so i was able to like eat ramen for the first time and eat, drink boba for the first time and like things that like usually a white girl would be experiencing for the first time but as a filipino i was also experiencing it for the first time so it's just like things like that and you just have opportunities to like meet anyone be who you want to be there's so many clubs on campus where it's for like asians filipinos african americans um there's like Latino and Latina societies and all that. So there's so many opportunities to really just like vibe with your people. And it's just like really cool. That was like one aspect of SCSU that like I didn't really take advantage of too much just because I did have my sorority sisters. So I would be hanging out with them more than doing like another club. But they do have those opportunities for students, which is like really nice next up is leadership so before i went to college i did a decent amount of like leadership in high school but not anything that i did in college um i was basically like in clubs and stuff in high school but not too 
involved but in college i got super involved so one of the big things that you can get involved with in SESU is associated students or AS. I personally never got involved with it but my boyfriend did and he was the PSFA representative which is the College of Professional Studies and Fine Arts which is what our majors fell under and then he was also treasurer for something. I don't know. He's gonna so make fun of me that I don't know what he did, but it's fine. Um, so there's that and so Associated Students is basically like the college version of like student government and so there's like the student body president and their vice president blah 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 blah. So you have the opportunity to get involved with that which is really nice. I just personally never did just because again I was like super involved in like my other stuff like i said before there's so many clubs on campus too like if you go on like the scsu website and look up clubs there's like pages and pages and pages um and so literally whatever you're into you can find at scsu like guarantee um there's so many things on top of that let's say if you don't find a club that you are into and you want to make your own club you totally can there's this like awesome way of making your own club it's super easy you just like go on the SCSU like organizations and clubs page and then there's like a step-by-step -step process of how to make your own like registered student organization and so during my senior year of going to state I started up my own club called her campus at SCSU and so if you don't know her campus is like this media company and basically they have chapters at like all of the schools pretty much and it's an online magazine for every single school and you have a team of writers who write articles about like beauty lifestyle fashion all that good stuff and I also had an executive board and so I had my senior editor, my social media director, my marketing and publicity director, my events director, my recruitment director. So I was able to make that from scratch and so I was able to do that for a year until I graduated. Um, so I just gave the reins to the new girl. So I was able to do that which was like amazing and if you guys have any questions about starting up your own chapter let me know because I probably can help you <laughs> um, but that was really cool too just because like being the president of your own club is something that a lot of future like careers they'll look at and be like wow that's super cool you're also given like this huge like responsibility of being president and like all of these girls are looking up to you and is like you're the one who tells us what to do um so you get to do everything it's like amazing and you can basically do that for anything just because you can create whatever club you want to um all you have to do is like you just need like five other students their red ids and then an advisor and then you just have to complete like this training super easy um but yeah if you guys have any questions about that let me know down below um but also on top of that at SDSU they do have this event called the leadership summit and so I attended that last year and it's basically an entire day where they have like breakout sessions and speakers and all of that about leadership at SDSU just because leadership is such an important thing at that school and I definitely learned that um beforehand I wasn't really much of a leader I sort of was just following and would just be like a general member of clubs but not really a leader so attending SDSU really helped me with that and like learning who I am how to lead be all of that so they do have that as well which is really nice and then they do just offer like leader leadership training like throughout the year which is really cool too um and then also in the student union they have an office on the third floor um and then they have just advisors up there for like leadership and clubs and organizations as well which is like really nice it's called student life and leadership love that place and then lastly with leadership I obviously had majority of my leadership experience through Greek life which is like something I'm very thankful for um, so within my sorority my main leadership position was academic excellence chair so I was basically just in charge of all of the girls like grades I had meetings with people who their GPA was lower um, so I worked with our um, 
standards and all of that and then also I worked with our VP of operations because we did host an event twice a year at the end of every semester for the girls who either a went above and beyond with their grades yeah with their grades and also for dean's list girls so we basically would i remember i went to costco i got a, like a bunch of bagels um food we did prizes so this was when i was the campus rep for the social life so we did t-shirts i remember we did personalized stickers one time we did um bracelets like so much fun stuff so i was able to host events um we did different like things for the chapter for grades as well so that was like a huge leadership position and then i also remember my second year in the chapter i was like the magazine chair so kappa delta had like a national magazine so i did that and then i also was a part of like smaller committees as well throughout kappa delta and then outside of kappa delta i was vice president of membership for order of omega which is a national greek honor society i was social media and public re relations director of Rho Lambda, which is a national leadership um, sorority honor society for people who have great leadership experience within like Panhellenic. And then I also was a Rho Gamma for Panhellenic recruitment. And so I helped girls find their sorority. Um, I made a video on that if you guys want to check that out. And then also, again, I was campus correspondent and chapter president of her campus at SCSU. So a lot of leadership opportunities for you. You just have to put yourself out there and just like make college what you make of it. And then the last thing that you guys probably want to know about is everything about school and classes. And I would have probably put this first, but I know if you're watching this video, you cared more about knowing about Greek life and partying. So this one is last, but you know, best for last. The first thing that I wrote here is that 100 level classes are a waste of time. So when you're a freshman, you have to sign up for general education courses. And so they are just there for you because they're a requirement. So I remember I took like COM 103, I took some weird math class, I took some weird history classes i had to take like spanish and it was basically like stupid classes that i like is like a little bit harder than high school and they were all classes that don't pertain to me now i don't remember anything that i learned in those classes they were stupid and so with that being said they were just a waste of time honestly and i hated them and it was just not fun and i think that's why too freshman and sophomore year people can party a lot more and have a lot more fun just because classes suck but you do have to make sure that you still put like effort into those classes because they still matter because <laughs> they will still be on your transcript um but for me they just like were not fun at all i didn't like any of them and it wasn't until junior and senior year which i liked my classes which are when you're in like your major specific classes so I hope you like those um, but yeah and then the next thing that you should know at SCSU is that classes fill up like hella fast for SCSU basically registration you get your specific registration day time and then you can register for classes in your online web portal so if you have a later registration day and all the classes that you need are filled then you have to get on a wait list and then who even knows if you're gonna get on those classes still and it's just like stressful and not fun so there was like a lot of times where that happened to me those especially happen to you when you are looking for those 100 200 level courses just because sometimes those classes have like 500 people meaning that everyone wants to take it meaning it's probably an easy class meaning it will probably be full so that happened to me a few times and then i had to end up taking like another random ge class which i didn't like so again classes fill up fast you just have to make a plan on what classes you would take instead of the of your first option so just basically like a plan b option a plan c you know you know the deal another thing that i wanted to share with y'all is that regular advisors aren't really like that helpful in the academic advising center um they're just there to like make sure that you're like taking 
your classes but like if you have questions about like specific classes or like anything like that they just don't really help that much i found the most help through my major advisor um alexa in jms was the best advisor ever she's the cutest thing and so if you are in the school of journalism and you have a question go to alexa because she will save your life she is the one who and any other major advisor will know more about the specific classes regular academic advisors they just sort of are there to keep you on track um of graduating on time which i didn't even do so again not that helpful regular advisors no bueno major advisors pretty good talking about journalism this is for all my journalism friends out there <laughs> i decided to major in journalism after I figured out kinesiology wasn't going to work anymore because I couldn't even do chem 100 and so then I switched to journalism and the first few classes were good I had some like social media classes that was super fun but I didn't realize that I wanted to emphasize in something like um media studies or public relations until it was too late and so then I was stuck in just journalism meaning all of the people in my classes even though i found my really tight homies super amazing bffs for life in my classes they all wanted to be like news reporters or writers or in broadcast television or just like news like that and i honestly hate that and they all know that i hated it too so like this is not news to anyone but i hated my life and i knew i didn't want to do news i knew i didn't want to write in a newspaper because that's lame and i wanted to do like social media but it was too late for me to have switched to media studies or even pr and my advisor was like you would have to stay here for like an extra year and i was like dear god please no so i just stuck it out but if you no, you don't want to be a news reporter. Do not do just journalism. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. People will tell you that just journalism, like, you'll be good. Like, it's a broad major, so, like, you're fine. But now I tell people I was just journalism and I'm applying to these social media jobs. And so, if you're doing a major like that, you need to have internship experience, like, for sure. And I had technically three internships during my college experience so you definitely need to have internship experience because they're going to care about more they're going to care more about internships than school honestly and it's crazy because you're paying all this money to go to school for your degree to get a job but they're going to care more about your internship experience than your classes which is interesting because i've had interviews before where i'm explaining to them all this experience that i've gained from these classes and they don't care they only care about what you did in an internship so that is also something to take with a grain of salt because i don't know basically just get your internships in line doesn't matter if they're paid or not they won't care about that either just make sure you have some internship experience to put on your resume with addition to your other stuff obviously um and then also with jms just like i don't know I don't know what to say more about that just i didn't like my experience but again it's different for everyone okay and last thing about school is just know what you want to do so if you didn't know i had to take an extra semester because i was late to the game with journalism also with journalism you have to take this test to get into the major called the gsp or the grammar spelling and punctuation test so you have to pass with a high score and no one passes it and everyone has to petition into the major so i had to take the test three times until i failed all three of them i had to petition my way into the major which is why i had to take an extra semester and so there's just like things like that that's annoying but all i'm saying is just know what you want to do if you want to graduate on time Again, I started off with a different major, I added a new major, I added a minor, and then I had to take minor classes, and then I had to take my major classes, I had to take tests to get into a major, all this stuff. So if I would have went back, I probably would have started, 
out as like undeclared and so you can just take different classes in different areas and then you can really figure out what you want to do which is like a lot smarter now that I think about it but again I didn't know anything and so I'm just here to help you guys just like know what's up because I didn't know and now I wish I could have done that and so I could have gotten like a little taste of everything but again couldn't do that they also have the option of like interdisciplinary studies where you basically have like three majors but again I didn't do that okay and so to end things out basically overall going into SCSU was honestly like the greatest four and a half years of my life I met the most amazing people I took such great classes I got such great opportunities through going to SDSU I partied hard I did a lot of fun things I met my amazing boyfriend I met my amazing best friends and roommates and just everything and I was able to go a lot of places do a lot of things hang out do all that stuff and so again I wouldn't have gotten all of that unless I moved 2,000 miles away from home and started my life here four and a half years ago and so I'm so thankful that I left Illinois and came here because my life would be a lot different now if I wouldn't have done that and I don't regret a single thing so if you guys are planning on applying to SCSU or you're going to SCSU best of luck to you I wish you all the luck in the world and I hope you have the best four years or more than that of your entire life SCSU is the most amazing school ever um I wouldn't have gone to any other school and yeah so that is today's video I wanted to give you guys an inside look of Greek life um leadership clubs school all that stuff so I hope you guys liked today's video I hope you guys found it as helpful as I did when I was trying to find videos like this when I was an incoming freshman but yeah that is it for today I hope you guys liked it and if you did make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and then leave some comments down below for me if you are going to be attending SDSU or anything that you want to write me and then also make sure you go follow me on my Instagram at Emily Mayant I post a lot of my behind the scenes stuff on my stories there and then also I just mostly use Instagram in general so make sure you guys go follow me on there and then also just make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you guys like this content and if you want to see more college related videos even though I'm technically not a college student now I can still talk about my experiences which I hope you guys enjoy so yeah I will see you guys next time and until then bye